Hello friends and family, this is Nate Swain of Bristol Springs Free Church. I am uh, very excited. It's beautiful outside, it's sunny, it's warm. Um, we've been waiting for a long time to be able to go outside um, and just absorb the sunny weather. Even if you're mowing the lawn, uh, clearing some weeds, um, it's something to be thankful for. Man, it's just so nice to be able to be outside. And also, um, as of this last Memorial Day weekend, um, churches might be able to start gathering together, which is um, something else that I'm very, very thankful for and looking, looking forward to the times when we can see each other on a regular, regular basis again. Um, I have learned that there are basically two types of people. There are those who get it and there are those who don't. Nope, that's, darn it, wrong joke. Um, that's stolen from somebody else. Don't take credit for that. What I meant to say is that during this time where we've been separated, there are basically two types of people that I see. Um, there are those who are considered uh, non-essential, um, they're stuck at home, uh, maybe they're still working, but they're not able to go to work, so they're considered, um, they're required to stay home, uh, and they really want to get out, they really want to get back to their to their normal lives, whatever that looks like. Um, and then there's the other group who are considered essential, and they are still going to work, but they're understaffed, they're supposed to, re they're required to wear masks, etc., 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 and they are also just really wanting life to become easier. And something that I've noticed is there's this amount of anger that's been building amongst both of these groups. Even, even in myself, you've got the crew that, that, that just wants to be let out. You know, we're, we're stuck at home. We're, we're not allowed to be around friends. We're not allowed to gather um, very easily. And we just want to get back to normal life. And sometimes it feels like we're being held down and then there's the people who are at work who are being required to wear all these masks, follow these guidelines, and they're getting frustrated because they're understaffed, they're working harder, and all of these things make life more difficult for them. And I'm seeing frustration and anger building. And the question is, is then how do you respond in those situations? Um, certainly, obviously, we want to protect each other and, and be responsible, but but when there are parts of life that are frustrating, that cause anger, how should we respond? And last video, last week, I guess, um, talked about putting off uh, and putting on from Ephesians 4. And I want to I wanna go through uh, another couple of verses today, hopefully very briefly, and just talk a little bit more of that as it relates to this current situation. Maybe, Lord willing, we're on the edge of, of, of the end, but um, regardless, I think these are applicable to any part of life that we are in. So I want to read um, Ephesians 4, verse 26. It goes as follows. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. The fact is that there are parts of life that are legitimately anger-causing. Anger is essentially a, a response to wrongdoing. And there is wrongdoing in this world. There is pain, suffering, injustice, all of these things. And Paul says, you're going to be angry. There are things, there are going to be times when you're mistreated, you see people mistreated, and it's going to cause anger. Jesus, as a matter of fact, became angry when he saw people pushing others away from the gospel, um, when he saw people uh, using the temple for their own monetary gain. Paul got really angry when he, uh, when he, uh, saw that the that the Jewish people in Galatia were changing the gospel and leading away the Galatian the new Galatian Christians to a new gospel that made Paul very very angry. And so we acknowledge there are times when anger is fair, but that cannot be a license for us to justify sinning to justify acting in a way that is wrong. You know, it's interesting, whenever I get angry, I always want to think, boy, my anger is righteous, I'm going to respond correctly. But almost every time that I get angry, I find myself using that anger to justify acting in ways that I wouldn't if I wasn't angry. I justify mistreating people. I justify acting in an arrogant manner. And I'm seeing that either of these two groups, they're stuck at home, I feel like the government's got the thumb down, or they're at work and they feel like just life, their jobs are just unnecessarily hard. I'm seeing anger as a response to that. And with that comes this, this nastiness and willingness to gossip, to tear down others 
because of their anger. And you know what? I do it too. And I don't think that that's a good response that, that Christians should have. Why? Um, if our speech is characterized by, by, um, by sinfulness, when we are angry, we allow that to justify sinfulness, um, that reflects poorly on Christ, right? If, if I get angry at something, maybe it's legitimate, maybe not, and then I, I use that to justify my own arrogance, to justify um, tearing other people down, that makes Jesus look bad. So I talked about last time, Ephesians 4 verse 24, it talks about putting off, renewing your mind, putting on. So do not sin. So what's the put on part? Well, let's look at uh, Ephesians 4 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Do not sin, rather let your speech be that which builds people up and gives grace to those who hear. Something to think about. Our speech reveals what is going on in our heart. What does your speech tell about you? What does your speech tell others about Jesus? Are you someone who builds up or are you someone who tears down? This verse says, don't let bad speech come out. Only what is good for building up and gives grace. That's really hard to do, to respond in a gracious manner. But the cool thing is, is if you are indeed a follower of Christ, a, a child of God, you are here on earth to represent him. You are his ambassadors. And how you speak, whether it's on Facebook, things you post, share, whether it's in person, when you're talking about other people, how you, how I speak, reflects on Jesus, reflects on how people view God. And I hope that our speech can be characterized by graciousness, remembering that, that, that God had a, justif a justified reason to be angry with us and responded to us with grace, and we should do the same. So, I just want to encourage you, examine your speech today. What does your speech tell about what's going on in your heart? What does your speech say about what's going on in with your relationship with, with the Lord? What does your speech tell people about God? We communicate all the time, and how we respond to these difficult situations, we're communicating a lot about who Jesus is, who the Lord is. Um, if all of this is new to you, I just want to encourage you, please uh, message me. I'm going to put my email on the on the bottom of the screen, um, if I remember, hopefully. Um, by all means, ask any questions. If, if you don't understand what it means to be a child of God, um, or you have just other any other questions, by all means, uh, let me know. I would love to, to talk with you. Our speech tells us a lot. It speaks about who God is, and I think we need to take it seriously. So, hope that's encouraging to you. Maybe, hopefully, it's convicting. It's something that I'm working on, and uh, I pray that we would be people whose speech is characterized by grace as though seasoned with salt. Perfect for the, where we use it. So, hope to see you all soon. Hopefully soon we'll be able to gather together.